Welcome, everyone, to episode 19 of the official podcast for Guardian One, a Destiny group dedicated to the prosperity of Guardians everywhere. We broadcast live Thursdays at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Guardian One Network. My name is Remy, and tonight I am joined by River. Haters gonna hate, I'm here to set them straight. Crimson Warlock. Hey, everybody. Jez. More Eris. And Agrios and Dendros. Greetings, Guardians. We are going to be talking about all things Destiny, but first, housekeeping. Housekeeping. All right, Guardians. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast, however it is that you choose to listen. And be sure to follow Guardian1 on Twitter at G1Net. That's G, the number one, N-E-T. And again, just a reminder that we only use the numeral one for G, uh, excuse me, for Guardian1 whenever it's uh, abbreviated, such as our Twitter account. So again... That's G, the number one, in E-T. In addition, be sure to check out the Guardian 1 website at guardian1.net. You can also send us feedback at our email, feedback at guardian1.net. We also have a Bungie.net forums group that's currently at 119 members. If you want to join, just search for the group name Guardian 1. Guardian 1 has its own clan, so if you want to join the Guardian 1 clan, just set the buttons that say set as PlayStation clan or set as Xbox clan. We utilize the forums for comments and feedback, so be sure to join the conversations going on there. Big thank you to all those currently in the Twitch chat. You guys rock. Thanks a lot. Uh, as Remy said at the top of the podcast, you can watch the show live at twitch.tv slash guardian1network. Broadcast every Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. Can't catch the show live. You can always go to the Guardian One YouTube channel at youtube.com slash guardian1network. Guardian One is a proud member of the Guardian Radio Network, so be sure to check out the Guardian Radio Network website at theguardiansofdestiny.com. You know, you'll find all the different podcasts as part of the network, including the flagship podcast, Guardian Radio. That's done every Monday night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash Guardian Radio. You can also follow their Twitter account at Guardians of D and their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Guardian Radio. Other podcasts include the DoD podcast, uh, Warlock School, TTL Party Chat, and there's also the audio drama Ghost and Echoes and... The new thing they got going on is the Grimoire card of the week. If you guys haven't heard, listened to that, I definitely recommend it. It is awesome. Greg's doing a great job. And yeah, that's it. Let's, let's go. Let's awesome. This. Awesome. Yeah, I love those. Uh, I love the audio Grimoire. Oh, what a, man. What a great, <clears throat> what a great thing. Uh, what a great uh, avenue for Craig to explore like he you know that Ghost and Echoes is awesome he's actually a very accomplished musician on his own mm -hmm. uh, and then for him to tackle this is I don't know it's it's really beautiful in that he's got so much to work with you know Bungie yeah. it with just a, it, in just a sentence is able to paint such a such a beautiful picture <clears throat> of, mm -hmm. what, of what's going on uh, and so I don't know it's it's really awesome definitely check that out it's a good morph uh, from where uh, you can, what was it, Ghost and Echoes, Ghost and Echoes first became, you know, it was just like a news segment. And now it's become this whole thing that's really taken a life of its own. And I'm loving every moment that Craig puts out stuff like that. Right. It, it's, it's, it really harks back to uh, the days of old with radio and, yeah. you know, sound effects and you're not looking at what's going on. And so you're forced to use your imagination. But mm -hmm. then everything else is is supported by the, the drama that unfolds. <clears throat> and it's awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah, great. Uh, we have a ton, a absolute ton of stuff to cover. Uh, the Bungie Weekly Update had a, a, an amazing amount of stuff for us to go over. Uh, but real quick, I want to I want to address this. Uh, I read on Twitter, Luke Smith, the raid designer in Destiny, said that they are not right now working on a like a matchmaking party for raids. Like they're not. They are not actively seeking this out. And over the course of the last, you know, almost three months, I've noticed this trend. And that is when I'm in the tower, I get like five or six messages from people saying, you know, message to all random people. Would you like to, would you like to raid or would you like to nightfall? <clears throat> and I started thinking that we don't really need a matchmaking in that sense 
because you do go to this tower, and as soon as you hit that, as soon as you hit go to that tower, it instantly match makes you uh, with people in your in your area. And I, what I want to do is I'd like the community to come together and decide on a way of, without having to message people, to know what it is that you are looking to do. Uh, and I, I uh, like, for example, when you go to the Home Depot uh, and you see those gentlemen standing outside uh, over by the bushes, you know that they are there to help you. You know that you know what they want to do. They are there to help you uh, grout or put down tile or whatever. Uh, you don't you don't have to call them. They're just standing there waiting to be addressed. And I think that. I think that this is something that we could do as a community come together and have like, like, is there a part of the tower where we could stand that would mean I'm looking to raid? Like, you know, maybe that, maybe that uh, on the left hand side, when you first drop into the tower, there's like that entire wing that you, that you can get to up those stairs. Like, what if that is where you stand if you are looking for a raid? Uh, but I don't, I don't know what the optimal path would be in this case, but something, something that would let people know is you, they could just look over there and see these people want to raid, like, and then you could just be messaged, you know. But I want it to be something that, something that can be spread throughout the community fast. Like maybe people already have ideas about how this can roll out. And before we start the conversation on the updates, does anybody here? Uh, has anyone here cracked this code? Like, do you, have you guys seen people, you know, dancing in a certain area or something like this? Uh, or do you think that this is something that we could implement as a community? Any ideas uh, at all on, on moving this forward? Because I would really like to be able to suit up and then go, you know, wait in line and see who's coming through, who's looking for help. You know, like, I think that this is think that this is something that that guardian one can do on its own but as a community-wide push uh could be really useful especially in especially in uh light of no raid matchmaking happening in the near future uh river do you do you have anything on this like is there something that you think a part of the tower that we could sit in or is there another way that you find people like i know that there's like looking for group, uh, and there's you know a ton of websites and Twitter that, where you can contact these people. Uh, but do you think that this is viable? Do you have any ideas on where we could go with this? Honestly, I think I've seen something like this on Reddit, and I'm sure uh, somebody else has seen it because I don't really surf Reddit that often. I know that there was a thread out there who that said pretty much said it said the exact same thing that you said. Awesome. Uh, I think uh, I think one of the meeting places was actually downstairs, uh, like towards the bar area or something like that. Honestly, I haven't really seen that in the tower myself. I've probably seen maybe one or two people kind of meeting down there, but it, it's not as widespread as it should be to be effective. Now we could, we as Guardian One could probably do something like that, and you know we got a pretty good presence. I feel in, in some in some Destiny circles. So if we just do it and keep at something like that, you know. Hey, I'm gonna be here between this time every single week. If you guys want to do something, hit me up during this time. I'll be standing over here, you know, every single week. Eventually, word's gonna spread. Right. <clears throat> I think that's a. Uh, I think that that's exactly. Uh, that's exactly it. Um, and I'm going to be looking for that article. Uh, what do you think, uh, Warlock? Have you seen this, or do you have any ideas to further this? Um, what I think should probably happen is uh, there needs to be an option, like, um, when you look at your friends list, you know, you see everyone who's in the tower. And I think what you should be able to do is set a flag on yourself that says, you know, I'm open for a party. And then we could have uh, color coordinations. You know, um, daily, daily is green, you know, nightfall's red, raid is purple, you know, just something like that. And then when people, like, go to inspect you, it will show that color flag next to your name or something just on the screen. So I like that. know that you're looking for a party. And if they're looking at the, at the list of who's in the tower, you know, it's next to your emblem as well. Just 
so people could pick you up really fast if that's what you want to do. Man, what you're talking about is a really great idea, <clears throat> and that actually goes further than just being in the tower. Like, imagine if you could just set a flag on your character, uh, I want to raid, and then you go out and you are, you know, doing your public events or whatever, and what if somebody sees you and says, oh, you know, here's this guy who wants to do this, or maybe Nightfall, or... I think that that's a really, a really cool idea. Uh, or if it was an automatic notification on your screen, if, like, say you set yourself to, I want to raid, and you're going around in public events or something, and somebody else has that set too, it could pop up on your screen, hey, this guy's nearby, he wants to do a raid too. Right? That's a great idea. That's a great idea. What about, you know what else, what about a... <clears throat> an additional chat channel. Like I know I see a lot of people that go into the fire team channel, but what about a public channel? Like what if there was just a way that you could go to the tower or even just anywhere in the area <clears throat> and then just be able to communicate whoever's match made with you in that area, you know, like that means that I could take my group of two or three people and then go sit in the public, in the public channel. And when people join in, they could say, Hey, I'm looking for a group. And then we could say, Hey, this is a this is what we're doing right now. Uh, that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. Uh, what do you think, Jez? I know that you got more people to play with and you know what to do with, but what do you think on this front? Is there a, a, like a place we could stand or uh, a chat channel or a flag that you've been thinking about that, that might be good for this? Well, I do remember the Reddit post that River was talking about, uh, like probably either as soon as the game came out or even before the game came out and i think they gathered on that big black door where there are sometimes spawns okay but uh i think probably an easier way would be your emblem like if you had an emblem that you could just equip and then you'd open up your awesome uh your roster and you would see everyone in the tower with say a braid looking emblem then that you could is like, a great hey, idea. Okay, we'll do that. That is a, an absolute great idea. And mm -hmm. you know what? It could be one of those ugly ones that you know no one ever uses. <laughs> so when you see that one, you're like, well, I know he's definitely not using that because he thinks it's cool. <laughs> you know, like that's a really great idea. Emblems are a really great idea. And that's something that we could implement now uh, without, without any additional help from Bungie or the people working mm -hmm. there. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think, Agrios? We've uh, had some really great, really great examples and some really great ideas. Well, what do you got on this? I, I, I think they're all great ideas, and uh, I too remember that the Reddit post that everybody is referring to. Um, that yeah, they definitely. I, I think perhaps it was a little early in the game actually that there weren't as many people just looking to raid just yet, and perhaps that's why the the, the spot to gather didn't initially catch on. Um, I think maybe little tiny flags, like just colored dots even, like when you see a player's nameplate, like I'm looking to, to raid, you got a little green dot at the end of your name so that you can see it with even without having to actually go in and inspect a player. You can just notice him walking past and be like, oh, that guy wants to raid. Um, right, the other exactly. Thing I think I'd like to see is uh, a little bit, I know they don't want to matchmake for raids, but if they had uh, smarter matchmaking for the tower and use something like we were talking about before as far as like little tick boxes, like looking to do... We even the two different raids have one for Crota's End and one for the Vault of Glass. And if you check that, if they would just fill the tower that you go to with all other people looking to raid, that would allow you to just connect with these people a lot easier. Man, that would be insane. That's a really great idea. It would be like a separate hopper. Exactly. Man, that's that's really awesome. I like that a lot. Um, all right, cool. Well, <clears throat> anybody out there? listening uh feel free to contact us with your ideas or if you have seen something that might work as well and uh and we'll get the we'll get the collective working on this and see if we can't find something that's obvious and universal and when people see it they will think that's what those people are doing maybe it could be a combination of your emblem plus where you're standing or i don't know there's there's obviously many ways we could do this so we'll keep the conversation going over the weeks and see if we can't we see if we can't ferret out something that will be beneficial to everyone because there's been many times when i've been ready to raid and totally could raid but i don't want to bother people by sending just random people messages uh so yeah awesome 
Well, then why don't we get right into it with Agrios and what is going on in the weekly update? Very exciting news uh, and a lot to parse. Let's uh, let's get there. Yes, lots and lots of new information about the, the dark below and many changes coming in preparation for it. Uh, Earlier uh, this past week, we, we had a huge new update. It involved uh, changes mostly to exotics in preparation for the Dark Below. Uh, exotic armor and weapons no longer require Ascendant materials to upgrade. The final upgrade node of all exotic gear will require an exotic shard. Exotic shards can be attained by one of the following means. Dismantling unwanted exotics or purchasing from Xur for seven strange coins. Exotics now start at a higher base attack value and have a narrowed upgrade range to compensate. Along with these changes came a, a huge number of upgrades to, to exotics, um, making several that were, were disregarded or, or just taking up vault space into uh, powerhouses, namely Bad Juju. Uh, also, we had changes to Thorn, Hard Light, Soros Regime, Monte Carlo, Might of Multi-Tool, Hawk Moon, Red Death, Plan C, Pocket Infinity, and the Vex Mythoclast. Uh, oh, Invective, Icebreaker, Patience of Time, Super Good Advice, and Truth as well. Almost missed those. Some other changes to the game came in form of it came in the form of fixes to glitches in the raid. Mainly one that Atheon did not correctly send three players through the time gates, which could be a, a crippling, a crippling blow to anyone's uh, run on Atheon. They also fixed an exploit where the Templar could be forced off its platform, so no more cheesing for the fifth chest. I never got anything good out of the fifth chest, anyways. <laughs> Mainly just <laughs> <materials>. womp, womp. <laughs> Has anybody got anything good out of that fifth chest? What fifth chest? The one. I think, I think it's just all shards yeah. and energy. I was just joking. I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, I've never had it, so yeah. Uh, you know what? Just uh, touching on that real quick. I know Warlock, you have bad juju, and have you had a chance to use it since the since the update? I have not. I uh, I got a Galar horn like two weeks ago, and that's what I've been trying to level up and. I didn't get it all the way leveled um, before the changes, but I'm kind of glad I did now because I wouldn't have had a shard to upgrade it anyway. But uh, I am planning on using the bad juju tonight or tomorrow and seeing what it's like. Awesome, awesome. And now to just everyone, does anyone here use regularly one of any one of these weapons that has been updated and have you felt the difference? Well, Thorn <laughs> seems much more useful, but yeah. I don't even have it up to the to the mark so that it has the dot, so I can't really comment. And well, is that because you're not interested in hand cannons, or you just got so much other stuff on your plate? Well, I didn't have the Thorn the Thorn at all until just recently when I did the bounty by myself because I just didn't have the. I don't have the PvP skill to stay positive all the time, especially on a hunter using at best Atheon's epilogue. I see. I see. So you don't take Vision of Confluence into PvP then? Well, I could, but the Thorn Bounty requires you to do void oh, damage. I, totally. I totally see what you're saying. Duh. <laughs> and hunters can't do that. Yeah, they can. Because wow. <laughs> I have two. <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> yeah, I got one. Man. Man. <laughs> more inclined to do PVP, so yeah, I feel like I'm a pretty exceptional uh, PVP player. So it it was kind of tough getting it the second time around. Uh, I do have Thorn maxed out, and it was awesome before the nerf, the accidental nerf, and I I was kind of upset whenever that happened. But now that it's back, it's different. It's definitely different. It does. It's not as good as it. I feel like it's not as good as it was in PvP, but they did kind of extend, you know, extend the mag and all that other stuff. So it's got a little more versatility to it. So overall, I'm still pretty happy with Thorn. I'm still going to take that everywhere I go. And whenever we're going to get into this later, but whenever uh, Dark Below launches and since I have two Thorns, I'm going to reset one, the one that I just got. 
and get that up to level 32. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, anybody else? What is uh, what is your go-to, Jez? What is your go-to weapon? Uh, Vision of Confluence or... Uh, Vision of Confluence or Talk Moon, mostly. Or uh, I have a Epitaph sniper rifle that I tend to keep handy just because I love the perks on it. It's got, like, the last round as extra damage, and when it's empty, it reloads faster, so it's really great for what I do, but it's not really useful for most things because it's arc damage, but I still still can't drop that. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, <clears throat> Warlock, what is your what is your go-to weapon? Um, my loadout usually consists of the Vision of Confluence, um, Icebreaker, and then um, Avoid Zombie Apocalypse. Um, but that's that's kind of changed now that I have the Galahorn. Um, I'm usually running my, uh, oh, it's a fusion rifle, void, um, fusion rifle. I don't remember what type it is though. Um, but that's usually what I'm running is, uh, my fusion rifle and the Galahorn now, but i I switch between those two loadouts, but I'm usually always using the vision of confluence. Uh, what about you, Agrios? What's your go-to weapon and or loadout? Um, Ah, Vision of Confluence. I'll stick with everybody else on that one. It, it, it's very, very versatile. I love the solar damage. A lot of the things that I want to drop quicker have solar shields on them. Uh, as far as the, the rest of my loadout goes, my secondary, I'm going to run either the Icebreaker, the Suprem Supremacy Sniper Rifle from the Queen, Light Slash Beware, maybe. And uh, <laughs> I have a, a Zombie Apocalypse uh, Solar Heavy that I'm quite partial to. Interesting. Interesting. And uh, so, so River, you said that you're going to carry that thing around with you everywhere. Is is does that mean that that's your go-to, or is there something above Thorn that you just that you you always go to? Well, it's kind of it's kind of weird since it had that nerf. I ha I was actually forced to go over to the Cirrus regime for for my main. Oh now yeah, that, right. <laughs> but now that Thorn's back, and it's got <clears throat> that versatility, I. Pretty much gonna see how I, how it feels with Thorn, especially whenever the new stuff drops. Uh, if not, I'll probably just go back to my Cirrus, or I even have a TMR's Lash from the Iron Banner. I might might even go with that because I got the uh, I did the what is it the Reforge? Ooh yeah, what did you get? I got I got stuff that uh, increases the super with a grenade kill and something else in it. But it, it's a good PvP one, and I actually have another one which I have. I have it uh, reforged to do some PVE stuff. So it really depends. I'll play with a few things. That's awesome. Yeah, Suros is my go-to. I I absolutely love it. I love the way it looks. I love the way it sounds. I feel I feel comfortable behind it. Like I feel like with it in my hands, I'm just going to I'm just going to win. You know, it's you know it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> so so remy do you play uh looking down the scope with that gun or are you shooting from the hip all the time i, I i'm most of the time looking down the scope <clears throat> i uh, i will unload on it open uh you know just hip firing if if there's more than three people in the in the 10 feet in front of me and i'm always surprised by how fat how much faster that it fires that's how that's how much i look down the scope <laughs> Is is I forget that it it I'm fires with, faster. I'm you know what I'm I'm looking forward to is when Suros comes back around. When I get another Suros after the update, and it will start at a higher level, and then I will be able to not level it up past that option for PvP uh, to where it slows down. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, but right on. Let's uh, let's get back on uh, let's get back on track. Where were we, Agrios? Uh, we were in the middle of talking about the update. Uh, there's a, uh, a few other changes that came with it, mainly involving materials. Uh, destination materials now drop from completing the Daily Heroic. And uh, also, destination materials now drop from completing the Daily Patrol Bounty. Um, another change to the bounties is they remove that annoying Relic Hunter bounty that asked you to do 10 salvages, even though there were never salvage matches available. Oh, uh, the, <laughs> the completionist nightmare. Um, the vendors 
uh, have some changes to them too. They reduced Cryptarch reputation game from engrams, but reputation reward packages now have an increased chance for legendary engrams. Players will now be able to use Vanguard marks and Crucible marks to purchase Spin Metal, Relic Iron, Spirit Bloom, and Helium Fragments from the Vanguard and Crucible Quartermasters in the tower. Zernel sells, sells new materials. I, I, well, I'm sorry. Zernel sells a new material, Exotic Shards, to upgrade the final node of exotics for seven strange coins. And faction class items are now replaced by faction emblems and the rank up reward packages from the faction vendors. I see. How do you guys feel about the changes to materials and uh, the ability to purchase them with your marks as opposed to trading them in for things? I was pretty let down. I have to say I was pretty let down by the by the news. Actually, scratch that. I was super excited in the very beginning when I first started reading about it because I read it wrong. I thought they were saying that instead of it costing uh, 50 materials for five marks that we were going to get, uh, what was it? Well, what is it now going the other direction? It's like 20, 20 materials for 10 marks or something like Correct. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly. I was excited about that because I was like, I'm tired of turning in 50 of these materials for only five marks. I would way rather turn in 20 materials for 10 marks. That makes, that makes things a lot easier because sometimes I don't get a chance to finish out the, the marks for the week. And then I really enjoy running around picking up relic iron and I turn that in for crucible marks because I, I really don't play a ton of crucible. Uh, but I, I don't know this, this upsets me, uh, but everybody I talk to, every single person I talk to is so excited that it goes in this direction because now they don't have to, now they don't have to go and farm. Uh, and I really, I enjoy farming. I, I enjoy running around, uh, and finding materials and picking them up and then turning them in for marks. And now, I don't know, now I'm sitting on like a thousand rel uh, a thousand spin metal that I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> Use it. I know, but for what? <laughs> Releveling all we'll your see. exotics. Yeah, right? exactly. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna need it for releveling all my exotics. I think that this could could turn around again because when I started thinking about this and why they would change this, I started thinking that this might have something to do with all of the people trying to relevel all of this gear. And and then it occurred to me that they could just change it at any time. They could change it back to the way it was next week. Like, what if it's a random thing? Or does anybody think that this is just here to stay? Uh, because part of me feels like this is just here to stay. Like, after, after complaining to a bunch of people and a bunch of people going, I don't know what you're talking about because... <laughs> Because it's awesome, uh, I started thinking that maybe I was the only one. So, did anybody else on this panel use use their materials to to get marks, or or was it just me? Just you. No, I was I was doing that um, because I I don't have a lot of time to to play usually, and I was getting a lot of Vanguard marks. Um, and what I was planning on doing until they they changed it up, um, I was hoping they still kept the the fifty for for five marks. And what I was going to do was I was just going to max my vanguard marks, buy as many materials as I could with those, and then buy as many crucible marks as I could because there's some crucible there's a crucible speeder that I want still, and uh, I don't I don't have enough marks and not quite the rank for it yet. But uh, now I can't do that. Like I've got to go straight through all the pvp to do it which i i i totally understand why they're doing it but i do wish there was a way to exchange marks for marks or something um even if it was at a pretty negative ratio just so that those people who don't like the crucible as much or don't like pve as much could still get those items that they want just a lot slower than other people that's that an interesting take that is an interesting take. Anyone else? I think I think your time could have been spent better from not. That's just my. I hate farming. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. I could be, I could be going on strikes. I could be in the PvP. I could be in the Crucible. Freaking sitting fools down. I don't. I don't want to have to farm anymore. I like this a lot. I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I'm, it's not so much was, that I hate farming so much. It's that I, there's just so many other activities that I would rather spend my time on Destiny doing, right? I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My issue with uh, like farming for the materials was that if I farm for the materials, I'm not... Or if, if I use the materials to get marks, then those marks are still counting towards my 100 per week. And at the start of the game, I was hitting that cap every week, so it wasn't wasn't something that was gonna benefit me to use up my materials to hit it faster. So I'm still still using the uh, marks, or still using material. I can't think anymore. I'm still <laughs> using the marks for materials because it's a much better time per mark ratio. Because even though I'm doing that, I'm still going through the place and picking up the materials as I see them. I'm just not focusing only on that. Yeah, I got you. I, I, you know what it is? Is I just, I, I don't have a lot of time to, for like specific activities, and I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to have to. It drag people along through my having to change diapers and things like this. So the I, so one of the things I really did enjoy doing in Destiny was just wandering around, like was just going to an area and watching people go, you know, watching people go about their business and just running around and not not doing anything other than farming, just running around and looking at the sites. Like I don't know. Apparently, I am the odd one out, <laughs> but it. It is. It, it does feel kind of nice to know that if I just wanted twenty spirit bloom, I could just make that happen. Like, but I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Moving on. <laughs> Moving along. Aside from uh, that, there were just a couple other technical fixes in the update, though a major one was they, where they fixed an issue in which using Xbox One Party Chat induced a slower frame rate, which I knew was a, a huge issue with a lot of people. I myself am on PlayStation, so I didn't have to experience that. Uh, were any of you, uh, would have you ha any of you having a problem with that on Xbox One? Nope. nope. You're, and you're talk to, talking to just me, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I thought you were the only one, but I wasn't certain. I didn't want to exclude anyone. Else. Yeah, I, I personally never had a problem with it. I didn't, I really try to avoid party chat as much as I can anyways. So I know I know Bell Bell Bunny had some issues with that. Uh, she was pretty vocal about it on Twitter, but you know I'm glad they fixed it. Well done, Bungie. <laughs> yeah, that that was a pretty quick turnaround on that because from what I understand, oh, yeah. people were just not wanting to play over it because they liked hanging out with their friends that weren't even playing Destiny, you know, so much, and they didn't want to lose out on that, so they were finding themselves playing other games. So I guess it was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Moving on to the the dark below. Uh, there, there's a whole list of uh, preview items they've given us that are, are going to be changing coming with the Dark Below. New legendary gear. Ex existing legendary gear on display in the tower will be replaced. New legendary gear will feature higher attack and defense values. Legendary items will still require ascendant materials for upgrades. This new, more powerful gear will be available to all players of Destiny. Legendary gear will not be as powerful as new raid gear or exotics. Um, now, there, there's no upgrade program for your current legendary gear like there is for exotics. Um, do you guys feel that the the raids the 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 currently named exotics are still going to be around in the loop table uh, as they are, or are they going to be the same ones? Like, for instance, W you No know, going to be available that an upgraded version of it will drop from now on like the exotics or do you think they'll all stay the same and there will be completely new legendaries that will be the more powerful versions remy man that's a that's a really good question and i i i hope that this is the way it rolls out like it it's it excites me to know that like like my Soros regime like i'm going to be able to have this be something that I take with me, you know, like I, I don't have to leave it behind in favor of newer gear. I don't have to. And this is something that I'd like to see across the board, but, you know, specifically on like like raid gear, like the 
the gear that you get from running um, the, the the our current raid. Uh, I think that that should be able to be upgraded as well. Like it itself is raid gear, um, and I, I don't know as much as right now it's everywhere. Soon, what's going to be everywhere is all of this Crota's uh, raid gear, and I would really like to continue representing this this Vex set. Even though I'm I'm pretty sick of looking at it, uh, I think it it still looks cool, and I would like I would like it to upgrade. Uh, but I guess I guess I understand if it is just one step in the this stairs, you know, like you you get this Vex raid gear, and that's how you are able to go to this Crota raid, and with this Crota raid gear, then you can move on to the next raid and raid gear. But it does it doesn't make sense to take some things. And update them, uh, but not others. Like you're saying that 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 the new legendaries that are going to be found in the vendors, they're going to have a higher attack value and a higher uh, a higher a defense value. Is that also going to contain a higher light level, or will you only be able to get to 29 still using only legendary gear that you find there? That's another good question. Uh, in addition. Uh, I've I've really been wondering. I really want to talk to you guys about the idea of like the the options between knowing what it is that somebody can do by looking at what they're wearing versus um, being able to customize your your setup. Because in in Halo Reach, your defense and attack were the same no matter what you wore. So you could wear absolutely anything. And I, I really liked that. I've been coming across pieces of gear that are like green or blue and totally awesome looking. And I would sport it right now. But because of its sad defensive values and its, you know, lackluster light, it, I just I can't I can't be bothered to put it on because it's just. Uh, but that's something that we can bring up closer to the end of the show. Like, I want to make sure that we get through all of this other information uh but i am super excited about the new legendaries from the vendors like i've purchased all of the ones that are currently out and i'm i'm ready to purchase more with my marks uh what do you think about that river is is this something that that you've been putting a lot of thought into is this do you have an idea of how this is going to roll out well uh I don't think I put in enough uh, enough thought into it because I just turned in uh, two exotic bounties yesterday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Crap. that was a fail. So, <laughs> so uh, the thing about the legendaries, though, um, I'm I'm glad that we're getting some new legendaries that are a little more powerful, and I think there should be an emphasis on a little bit more powerful. I really don't think they're going to be. It's going to be that huge of a difference having these new legendaries compared to what we have now as far as as far as normal legendaries um i i'm really glad that the new raid gear is going to be uh more differentiated between our uh the new legendaries this time around like it didn't really seem uh like they were too different besides light level as far as like gear and Weapons, I guess. No, the weapons still had the exotic attack and stuff, but it just didn't feel that way for some reason. But anyways, I, oh, and the uh, what is it? Radiant, uh, radiant materials. Oh yeah, like radiant that. materials. <clears throat> I like that. that I that puts in more difference uh, for the new raid gear, and people, because I've seen complaints like, why does the raid gear still require ascendant materials? I have to save my ascendant materials for the raid gear. Well, now that's gone, so stop complaining. Uh, I really, I really like that. the The idea that getting an additional set of boots or the fifth set of boots is you can break that down and get that ascendant material. That means that when you get these duplicates, it's worth something. It's absolutely worth something, or at least for a for a lot longer of a time than oh, this is my second pair of boots and they're completely worthless. You know. <laughs> and that's the uh, thing. People are saying that you know their stuff's going to be obsolete and. It's not going to be obsolete. You're still going to be a very viable threat in PvE and in, and in the Crucible, even in the Iron Band. 
I think people aren't putting enough weight into the current gear that they have now. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. What about you, Warlock? Is this is this something that you've put a, th- a lot of thought into, or have you turned in exotic bounties just recently? <laughs> no, I haven't had any exotic bounties drop for me for probably three weeks now. Um, so I don't I don't have any um, exotic bounties to do. But uh, I was listening to a, a streamer um, this morning, um, King Gathalian. If you guys watch him, he's one of the biggest uh, Destiny streamers, um, and he was he's going to make a YouTube video tonight and tweeted at Deech tomorrow that basically says, you know, you guys kind of messed up with this info drop, um, and he's he's kind of saying, you know, as compensation, you should probably send everybody a couple of exotic shards, you know, not not too many, but just a couple for all those people who have just turned in, you know, their exotic bounties and didn't know, you know, or, or they, they, um, dismantled some of their old exotics thinking that they are not going to be as good or not going to transfer over and be upgradable and things. Um, so we'll, we'll see if, if that, uh, gets any attention. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed and I'm, hoping that there's a way that we can upgrade the current raid gear like you were saying Remy because I do like the set as well um, especially the warlock helmet I think it's pretty cool looking um, but uh, I don't know like if there is a level 32 vault of glass or something that drops level 32 um, stuff I don't know if I'd want to run it again just because of how random everything in the vault of glass has been and i don't feel like i could farm it for tons of weeks with the uh, small amount of time i have when i'd rather be doing the crota raid yeah yeah that makes sense what if <clears throat> what if there was a way to upgrade it that was similar to what we're dealing with now with exotics where okay so you get let's say you get the boots from the crota raid and you can break those down and use that that materials to upgrade your boots but it basically does the same exact thing where you have it resets the level completely but it brings it up to date with the with the remaining <clears throat> like it, it basically puts it in place this is something i've been thinking about actually since i've really been enjoying the the blue and green gear what if you could just break down a legendary piece of chest and then you could add those materials to one of these other ones to upgrade it like i think that there's a, a huge a huge way to do this but but bungie is so stuck to this you if you see what they're wearing that's what they're wearing and that's what this does there there's very little variation i mean there's the different upgrade stats but but you know what they do uh, and I get it, and I can appreciate that, and I understand why they made that decision, but there's just such little variety. There's just such little variety right now. Like, I just I don't even want to look at my red gear. <laughs> I kind of want to break in here and propose a uh, even easier solution is to just have it so that Atheon on hard mode guarantees you a drop that you use to upgrade your gear, your raid gear. That way, people are going back to do Atheon, and there it's not random, so you know that you're going to be able to upgrade if you do it. Well, I, I like expect it. to see Ascendant Materials dropping from the Vault of Glass raid after, or not the Ascendant Materials, the um, the uh, the new materials for upgrading the new raid gear. I mean, do you think that they're going to implement that in the Vault of Glass, too? Like, you'll actually be able to get the raid upgrade materials from running the Vault of Glass? Because that would be another good reason to go back and run the Vault of Glass, then, too, is to get the materials you need to upgrade the raid gear you just got from the Crota raid. Uh, that would I'm not sure if they would want to do that. Like, that would kind of be... Uh, I don't know. It like, will old like raid gear break down into those new materials now? Is Like, I guess that's kind of my question. Well, my... My method would not use the breaking down method at all. That you just use that you would get the drop directly, rather than getting a chance to get the gear that gives you the materials for it. So you're saying instead of getting chatter white every time you kill Atheon, you'd get a <laughs> yeah. radiant shard. Yeah, or the equivalent to 
upgrade your vault of glass gear, but not something that would something different because you wouldn't want it to be used to upgrade your Crota Zen gear because that would be like, well, I did Crota Zen once and then I maxed out by doing vault of glass. Yeah, that's a good call. <clears throat> that's why I think that they're they're just gonna treat them like separate separate entities altogether. Like we're gonna see, like we've. <clears throat> I don't think they're going to be bringing the same. Like they're saying that they're updating the loot tables and that that the game is going to keep track of what loot you get in in what I can as- only assume is to ensure that you don't get seven boots in a row. You know, like maybe there will be a way for it to tell that it's already been you've already been given this, and you will have less of a chance of getting that. Like I don't think they're going to bring that into. Vault of Glass. I think that that's something that they're writing into this one. Um, and maybe just... What's that? I was going to say, uh, another way that they could make it kind of useful is to, instead of having to upgrade your Vault of Glass gear, just do like every other MMO lately and add like a transmogrification, which is just in WoW it's used to make your gear look like other gear. So they could make it so that your gear looks like your old Vex gear that you have in your bank. And it's actually your Crota gear, but that would also mean that it would look wrong from what the actual gear is. So I don't think Bungie like that right now. Yeah, I don't think they like that right now either. I could see on a long enough timeline, you know, like some kind of several years down the road, hey, you know, let's let's spice things up a bit. Uh, Yeah. And then throwing that out there, but <clears throat> I, but yeah, I keep saying anything to make everyone not look the same is a good thing in my opinion. Me too, me too. I would really like to not look the same uh, as everyone else. Although, although I don't give a crap who has the uh, that hunter chess piece from Crota. That thing looks awesome. Uh, I don't mind if everybody has that. Did you see that? Like the walkie-talkie sticking off his shoulder, and that looks so sweet to me. I'm, Better than I'm, the lucky freaking raspberry. <laughs> right, the lucky raspberry. <laughs> like got ugly, ugly piece of <laughs> It's ribbed, River. It's ribbed. <clears throat> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, Warlock, add to that list of people who should get some additional shards dropped into their, to their thing is the people who just days, like 48 to 72 hours before this update... I went through my my vault and I just slaughtered gear. I just slaughtered gear like like I got a second red death and I thought, you know what? I'm going to level this up and I'm going to stick it on one of my characters and they'll just always have that. Uh, but then after that happened four or five, six times, like I just all of my characters started to be full with legendary and exotic gear and I just said, you know what? I'm going to clean this out. I'm going to have one truth. I'm going to have one yellow horn. Uh, and if I want to use it, I will have a character go to the vault and pull that out. Uh, and that wasn't working where I'm, you know, the vault is full and my characters are almost full. So I just went through and I just, I just cut all my doubles. Like I, I at least, I at least broke down four exotics that I absolutely 100% would not have broke down bef- before that update had I known that update was coming. Like I was so furious when I found out that. The, one of the ways to get these exotic shards was to break down exotics. Like I thought, I just threw away four exotic shards. You know, that's that's 28 coins right there that I'm going to have to pay for to to get that, to bring me back up to this. Like it's 48 hours, man, 48. I was, I was feeling so good about it. I almost tweeted about it, but I'm like, ah, nobody cares about me, you know, redoing my vault. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to tweet about this. And then I should have, I should have, because then I could have linked back to that article and I could just say, ah. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I also. happened again with uh, all the people after the change that got word about the exotic shards, they're all like, ooh, I'm going to go break these down and burn all these exotic shards on my exotics and get them jacked up, and then found out oh. <laughs> a couple of days later that, oh, you have to turn them in and completely reset them to upgrade them too. So they just really burnt those shards for nothing. 
Man. Okay, so I'm glad that I don't fall into that category. That would really upset me. <laughs> I just broke them down. Like I didn't I didn't get anything for them, but I also didn't lose them. You know what? Either way, you're still out those same number of shards because you didn't didn't get them for breaking them down. They got broke them down, got them, burnt them on their exotics, and they're gonna lose them when they re-upgrade. So you both lost the shards. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> that's a good point. And Chicken Lord is right. We need a bigger vault. Bottom line. Oh, oh. Yes, we do. And, uh, actually, you managed to get more than them because where you got Ascendant materials, they got nothing. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good point. You still reap Ascendant from them. So you still came out on top, yeah. That is true. I did get a ton of Ascendant, Ascendant materials out of those. Some of those I had kind of leveled up. I got four or five each time. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, so my question for you guys really fast Gear is, uh, what, 17 coins? Or is it 13 coins? Seven. Uh, seven it, from Xur. From Xur. From to buy exotic gear, it's 13 coins, right? And then your secondary and uh, heavy is 17 coins. And then your primaries are 23. Correct. Ascendant, uh, or ex um, these shards now, these exotic shards are 7. Do you think that the the new level 30 Nightfall and stuff needs to give us more coins a week, or we need another way of getting more coins? I mean, what what if what if you know there's that that gear, a uh, weapon, and then you want to do an upgrade, but you don't have 45 coins because you haven't been able to put in as much time as other people? You now, what do you guys feel? Do you think we need more more coins uh, somehow? We need to be able to get more of them in a week. You know, <clears throat> I almost feel like this this was specifically addressing people who are complaining that they don't have anything to spend their coins on. <clears throat> I know Sharks has over 200 coins, and he's, he's pretty let down every week. I feel like this was a, a way of them tapping into like some like people like bell bunny are calling them like storage coins <laughs> like on on twitter like not strange coins storage coins <laughs> and so i feel like this was this was a way to get people to spend those coins uh but i don't i mean just if you run the if you run the weekly heroic three times uh what is that that's 27 coins that you get every week uh, and that's only enough to buy one primary and, you know, with, what, four left over? Uh, so, so I don't know. This is a good, this is a good question. What, what would you think that they would raise it to, Warlock? Like, do you think it would be 10? Do you think it would be 11 per run? 15. That's what I think. I think oh. they need to raise it to 15 for so the you, hardest difficulty. <clears throat> so you're looking at, if you run it three times a week... 45 coins you've earned instead of 27? Yeah, I think that's a perfect number with um, wanting to buy new exotics. You know, if you if you want to upgrade yours, that's two um, shards that you need, no matter what. I mean, you've, you've got the up... Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. As someone that has had one of each class. I don't really gather coins that easily. They they tend to burn much quicker. Although now that I'm starting to gather everything, I don't have to buy everything that sort of sells in one week, which would be terrible. Which is terrible, I should say. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sitting on ninety right now on my PlayStation account and like forty forty something on Xbox and uh I don't know. I don't know. I, I would like to see them raise the amount just because I, I love coins. <laughs> I love coins, but... I should I say, know. as someone that used to have three of, one of each class. Oh, yeah? What are you running now? Three Titans. Nice. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Agrios? Is, do you think that they should raise it now that there's a much more of an investment into each piece of gear like no matter what you either need to break down an additional exotic which is which is crazy talk or you need to or you need to buy it with seven coins like that turns each of these each of these into like primaries are now 30 coins uh 
you know, do you think that they need to raise it, or do you think nine is still good to go? Um. Well, I mean, they are raising the difficulty level, so I mean, they could always bump the coins up by like another set of three. You know, um, I don't know if they're going to have more than three difficulty levels before they said they're going to increase the difficulty of the weekly heroics. So does that mean a fourth difficulty level, or are all three just bumping up one notch? Because there's a fourth difficulty level that could mean three more strange coins. I, I think part of Bungie's tactic here was actually to make exotics more exotic, because that that seems to be part of their endeavor here. And if it takes people time to gather the strange coins to either get the exotics or get them fully up to par, it's going to mean the exotic that you choose to upgrade is going to be more unique, that you using that is going to be more unique until everybody finally catches up to that and gets all of the exotics upgraded. And to the more casual player, they may only ever get a couple exotics fully upgraded. Yeah, that sounds like the voice of reason. <laughs> uh, all right, What's that? It'd be nice if the uh, the exotic shard, the the version 2.0 of each weapon, had an extra, either a graphical change, like just a slight change to make it look new, or even a new perk to kind of differentiate it, other than an attack. <clears throat> this is a really great. This is a really great point, and definitely something that I wanted to bring up on the show. So I'm glad mm-hmm. that you. I'm glad that you threw that out there. But I absolutely 100 the weapons should look different. Like I feel like, like Bungie has gone out of their way to make sure that when you're looking at a piece of gear, you know in the ballpark what it's able to do. You know, you might know. You might not know if it has third eye, or you know one of these other perks, but you have a good idea of what it is and i think that they that they owe it to themselves i think they owe it to the lore um to to add a graphical change really anything like i don't i don't have an idea of what it could be and in addition i feel like there should be some kind of name change you know like there's like the vanquisher 7 you know there's there's guns out there and there's gear out there who have a a numeral behind them because this is that version of what they've done. Now they could still call it Soros regime, but maybe in the text there should be something different, and there should absolutely be something visual that lets people know that this is the upgraded version of that. Uh, because imagine if there's people who still want to run around with the regular Soros, you know, like that. It it should it absolutely look different. River, uh, do you agree? Disagree? No, I absolutely agree, man. Make make the visual change because that'll that'll give something good for the uh for the bungee artist to do kind of do a, a little <laughs> different spin and you know the, their artists are freaking phenomenal i mean look at all that uh that concept art that they put out is so beautiful and i think they could do something really phenomenal with new looks to some of this old gear totally uh, i don't i really don't like the idea of adding a two <laughs> or anything like that to the name i think a visual change <laughs> and you know chicken lord says the icon looks different so an icon change and a visual change to the to the gear, and I, I would be happy. Hawkman gotcha. turns into avian eclipse or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's mm. not bad. You know what? That would be cool if you had to take two pieces of gear. Like, what if you took Atheon's epilogue and Hawkmoon, and you married them into a new piece of gear? Like, oh man, that's a great way to introduce super powerful things. Like, what if you had to take a Mythoclast? And add it to something to make a a new weapon. That would be really cool. I don't know how that would happen, but that would be really cool. Um, what do you think, Warlock? Name change, visual change, no change. You know, I think there should be some sort of uh, visual change, um, but something that um, kind of points back to, you know, this was this was a vanilla exotic, and then something that points not not just the look but maybe you know something that always is going to make um i in the in the the dark below the the new exotics are very well themed but you know i think the vanilla ones would be cool if they had more of a theme to them as well so in in you know a year when when destiny 2 comes out and someone pulls out their vanilla icebreaker you know it's a vanilla icebreaker that they've had <laughs> forever. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that was amazing. That was amazing. I want the vanilla icebreaker right now. 
Ice, ice, baby. Tell me that wasn't intentional, Warlock. Tell me you did that on accident because that was funny as hell. <laughs> Total accident. I'm still laughing at myself. <laughs> uh, but no, that's that is brilliant. Like the idea that you could come across a totally clean version of one of these weapons, and I mean, it's it's. I did the math, and you're looking at over the course of a magazine, the change is going to be, uh, you know, like a thousand over the course of that 33 bullets in in like the Suros. Uh, or, or you know what? Let's even. I always have been wondering about this, and I I still call Suros Arcus, like from the Arcus regime when it was called that, and and it made me wonder if that was part of the lore itself. Like, the, did the people who made this certain set of them, that was the Arcus regime. And then Suros, this other group of people, got control of this manufacturing plant. And they made their own regime. They made their Suros regime. Uh, you know, like, is that part of the mythos? Or did they not want to put out Suros to the public because then <clears throat> people would use that? You know, it's, um, I don't know. <laughs> no, we could take this a step further. And, you know, the exotics that you got prior to the Dark Below, what if you um, would it upgrade those and that would be the only ones that would receive the visual change? Ooh, or the opposite of that, what if the ones that you got before the Dark Below came out are the only ones that maintain that original that original change? So all of the ones that were put out before the Dark Below all maintain their original skin even after upgrading uh, but the only ones that change are the ones that were purchased with that additional upgrade tree like that now that's a story right that is the story that is a way to uh, I, I purchased this before this whole thing mm -hmm. uh, but you're still able to compete that would mm -hmm. be awesome uh, and you could write it in you could write it into the to the Lord that would be Maybe not as awesome as the vanilla icebreaker. <laughs> but nothing's as cool as the vanilla icebreaker. <laughs> right. I do know some uh other games would actually change the model of the original rather than the new one. To be like, you can no longer get this. This is dropped. It's the vanilla yeah. icebreaker. <laughs> Right, right, but it functionally, functionally, no one could complain because it's the same weapon, you know. But visually, you signed on, you signed on in an era that has passed and is no longer available. Like you cannot get this one, you cannot get this one exact version. It's kind of like uh, Agrios pointed out that if you have a different ship equipped when you go to the shipwright. And, and they and they change your ship, they fix your ship. If you have a different ship attached, you're you will maintain, you will keep the raggedy ass starting ship. Like it will appear still broken. And that's really cool. Like I'm sad that I didn't do that and or I deleted that ship. <laughs> <laughs> so either one of those happened. I either deleted it and I, I had done that, or it didn't matter because I didn't change it. Uh, but that's, you know, going into the same theme. Uh, <clears throat> we are running late, but let's get as far as we can into as much as we can before someone has to leave. So take it away, Agrios. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, well, talking about unique weapons and whatnot, we, we continue here with new rank commendations. In addition to Crucible and Vanguard marks, purchasing new legendary items will require a Crucible or Vanguard commendation. Commendations are received in reputation reward packages delivered by the Postmaster upon reaching a new reputation level. Uh, I think this goes right along with them trying to make exotics more exotic or making it more difficult to get fully upgraded exotics. There's just one more obstacle on the path. You can only buy the new weapons from the <laughs> vendors with these commendations. And we don't know if you're guaranteed to get one on every upgrade or if you can even get multiple ones on each upgrade or if they're just totally random at this point. But this is going to have a major influence on the way you purchase from vendors in the tower. Uh, do you feel this is a good thing? Oh my god, no. Not at all. Uh, it it, 
it seems to me, it feels to me that having the 150 marks that it takes took you at least two weeks. Like you w were working on getting those marks up to purchase this for at least two weeks. I don't feel like there needs to be yet another hurdle to purchase weapons. Like I don't know, I don't know how much slower than once every two weeks, uh, you know, like that's the fastest that you can pick up a gun from that from that guy unless you're running multiple characters in which case good on you it's that's still only three every two weeks uh and so i i, I can't imagine how they're going to pace this that you're not going to end up having to blow your marks on on elements in order to not waste the ones that are coming in from the week like say you don't get any say you don't get any of these commendations and you're sitting on 200 points and your your week reset you still can't buy a gun and now you have to spend now you have to spend marks on on elements or i mean is there even anything else like like okay so you have to buy another sparrow it it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me like i i will have to see it in motion but but in my mind i think that this is just another additional hurdle that doesn't need to be there river I think it's their attempt to keep current legendary gear gear still viable for purchase. So it's that it's that choice that you have to you have this many marks. Do you want to buy one of these old legendaries that was available before, or do you want to hold out and try to upgrade your reputation too for accommodation, and then you can get some some more powerful legendary? That's what they're. Going I don't think the new old legendaries are going to be there anymore. If I understood what they were saying correctly, yeah, I, I was. It was my understanding that they're going to be a completely different set of of weapons and armor. What I'm really hoping for is that it just goes through a stock uh, and it's just mixed in. Interesting. What do you think, Warlock? <clears throat> what do you think these? Uh, these commendation marks that you have to earn in order to buy legendary equipment is this uh, is this something that you're looking forward to or is this just busy work you know i i actually really hate it because of what you said it's another hurdle and it really hurts the casual player a lot you know if um like for me me for example i'm lucky if i finish four bounties a day like i'm lucky if i'm able to do four and so for me it takes it takes a good week and a half, sometimes two or three weeks, depending on how much time I have to play, to get a rank up with anybody. And so if if my progress is barred because I, I wasn't lucky enough to get a commendation this time I ranked up, like, I'm going to be frustrated. Like, it just feels like if it doesn't drop every single time 100%, it's almost like, why did they put in an extra hurdle? For those people who who can't spend a lot of time in the game, who can't do their bounties every single day, who can't, you know, who who maybe didn't get their nightfall done and, and miss the weekly, you know, all that stuff, it just seems to to put you further and further behind and kind of makes the game stop if you're just not lucky with your RNG. You know, I would I would hate that for it to not drop on one hundred percent of the time and get screwed for like three rank ups in a row like that would just make me feel horrible right absolutely that's a really great that is a really great point uh <clears throat> and on the other side of this like this td the jester welcome to the show td uh he says seems like they are creating a new economy for players to even out the field in a sense a lot of people were able to get powerful stuff quickly in these past three months and you're absolutely right there's people who blew through destiny uh, in the first two weeks, three weeks, you know, the first month, after the first month, they already had the Mythic class. They already had all of these uh, element-powered uh, primaries. Uh, but I feel like I feel like this is not going to stop those people. You know, it's it's the same people. Like in the beta, they said the changes going from the beta into the actual game. One of the changes they made was how much reputation you get by turning in engrams to the crypt arc. And because because people were able to just grind the hell out of it, they got really high. They got really high marks. They were able to get um, a ton of stuff before so many other people were. 
And so what what Bungie did is they made it they made it a lot harder to gain reputation. Uh, and again, when I played the beta, I turned in a bunch of stuff and I never got, you know, people were getting like Yellowhorn out of it and things like this. Uh, and them stopping the higher level players really puts really sets it back for the casual player. Uh, but but it's not going to stop the people who are no lifing destiny. Like like yes, I agree that many people got super powerful in a short amount of time. But those are the people who are who are on it, eat sleep destiny. You know, like this isn't. There was already hurdles for people who are playing it at a regular pace or a more normal pace, uh, and I feel like I feel like this is just it, all it's going to stop, all it's going to hinder, are the casual you... player. Uh, Jez, what do you think about this? Is this is this a hurdle for you, or are you just? And on top of that, are you do you agree with what Warlock said? Because I agree with what Warlock said about a one hundred percent drop rate. Like I could probably be on board with with this whole system if every single time you got a commendation, every single time you went around that whole twenty five hundred point uh, board for each of the faction, that you would absolutely positively get one commendation to to purchase an upgrade. And I don't know if this is it. Agrios, is that have they explained that that's how it works? Uh, I mean, pretty much. I, I, I'm not entirely certain whether you get it for upgrading the factions. I think it's just the Crucible and Vanguard. Okay, if I understand it correctly. Oh, interesting. Well, I mean, I guess I guess that makes sense. But would would you consider those factions? Because you get packages when you go around that 2,500 lap. Is that a Vanguard package? That's not a Vanguard package. That's so would it's that a be dead orbit package or whatnot if it's dead orbit or so you're saying only crucible and only vanguard get this commendation because that's going to drive people from the factions real quick right well i think that was it because I, I think a lot of people once they got their vanguard and crucible to level three i know i once once i did i never bothered leveling them ever again i was always 100 percent of the time wearing a faction item because why not level up and try to get the unique shaders and unique weapons that they don't even sell sell and things like that so I'm always at any given point wearing a faction emblem and never leveling up my Vanguard and Crucible. But now this is a reason to do that. So now you have to make a choice there. Interesting. So then what is the what is the push still for faction then? Is it just to look different? And Unique weapons and shaders that you cannot get anywhere else even by purchasing them. So do you think that that the, those factions will not require a commendation to buy a weapon from them? I think they will still require a crucible, a crucible commendation, just like they require crucible marks to purchase. Interesting. Interesting. And it very well may include the commendations with their packages, but that's not what's implied by Bungie's wording. I, it, as long as, you know, from my perspective, anyway. Gotcha. So, so they are Jez. What is your uh, what is your answer to all of this craziness? Well, from the the information here, it does seem like the commendations are 100% drop, but they are from Crucible and Vanguard only. Like, this, no mention of the uh, the other ones, which is going to be a bit messed up, because how are you going to... What, uh, what type of game are you going to have to play in order to buy those types of gear from the factions now? Because they're the actual items are tied to Vanguard marks. Or, sorry, they're tied to Crucible marks, but most of the rest of game through doing PvE bounties and stuff like that. Gotcha. So I don't know... I don't know how it's going to work with the factions themselves, but it does seem like, like the wording that they said commendations are received in reputation reward packages delivered by the postmaster uh it doesn't say commendations have a chance to be in a reputation reward it just says that they are received in them interesting right. interesting all right guys well, it's actually time for me to go if you guys want to keep going i actually suggest it because that's a lot of stuff what 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 less what left do we have agrios a bunch of stuff 
Well, we haven't even got into this week's actual weekly update yet. It's still talking about some of the similar stuff, but we're probably three quarters of the way through the new info. You guys just keep going. <laughs> um, all right, I got another 10 minutes I can stay. Okay, we're going to have to try to go express route through it then here. Let's do it. Okay. Have a good one, River. <laughs> Yeah, you guys too. Keep it real. Hey, night, River. Yep, see you, man. Okay, so moving on to the exotic upgrades, we, we already talked about them uh, briefly uh, above, but starting December 9th, Zer will offer players the opportunity to upgrade exotics to higher attack and defense values. Upgrading exotic will require an exotic shard, and according to Game Informer, 7,000 Glimmer. The upgrade will reset the progression in the invested item, and each week, Xur will possess a selection of upgrades for existing exotics in his inventory, meaning what Xur decides to carry each week is going to control which exotics you get to upgrade. Uh, there will be many changes coming to the Crucible as well. Uh, expansion 1 will include two exclusive competitive playlists, uh, new Crucible arenas, Pantheon, Skyshock, and the Cauldron will, feature, will be featured in map rotation. Playlist available in the director will change week over week. Experiences will alternate between 12 and 6 player engagements. Map rotation will alternate between focusing solely on new expansion arenas and including original launch maps in the mix. So lots of different options for, for new PvP and, and lots of different ways to play the new PvP. There's even more about that in the weekly update. I'm going to go ahead and jump right up to there and talk about it all at once here. Uh, in the weekly update, he mentions that there he turns to uh, he, he turns to Lars Backen, correct? Lars Backen, am I right on that? Yeah, Sounds Lars Backen. <laughs> about the the new changes coming to PvP. Uh, first, he lists slaughter rolls live right now. In the event of a massacre, all parties are returned to orbit at the conclusion of the match. Uh, I this is to obviously to mm -hmm. stop you from playing the same people over and over again that are clearly slaughtering your team. And uh, according to this, it's live right now. Other changes coming: team-based playlist. If one team is grossly underperforming, the session is dissolved in favor of matchmaking. So uh, we're not sure exactly what this means now, but we could assume that once there is a certain amount uh, of uh, a point lead. By, by the winning team to the point where the, uh, the losing team cannot possibly hope to come back from it, rather than wasting the time to finish the match, someone will be awarded the win and the, team, the session will be dissolved. Uh, the Rumble play playlist, if three or more players are grossly un underperforming in the session, it's dissolved in favor of matchmaking. Public playlists, limited time playlists, salvage and combined arms will be available to all players. Bastion and First Light have been moved out of control in Clash to combined arms. So no more vehicles in control in Clash, which is a pretty major change. Uh, do you guys uh, feel these are, are, are is a good? Do you feel that this is a good way for PvP to go? Man, I am I am so excited about about these changes, these slaughter rules. I I did not know <clears throat> I did not know how Bungie was was planning on solving this and. And I wish that I could have been there. Like, I know I say this every week, but <clears throat> I really wish that I could be there when these decisions are being made because I only imagine that it's the most awesome conversations. Like, like we have a problem. People are are ditching out of, of, of Crucible or they're going AFK. Like, how do we solve this, you know, this problem where things are so one-sided for a variety of reasons, like it says that if they're <clears throat> grossly, uh, if they're grossly underperforming, like that could mean any number of things. And if they're going to dissolve that match, like if one side is just getting pummeled, there is no reason to keep the game going for another ten minutes. You know, like all that's going to do is just frustrate the people who are losing. And and really, at the same time, I've been on the other end of that where I have a full team of six, and the other team had two people drop out already didn't have one to start and so it's down to three and so i am looking for people to shoot and they're just not there because my teammate are you know like even even for the people on the winning side of that there's a disconnect of awesomeness <clears throat> and i feel like i feel like 
people are now going to e push even harder. Like, imagine if you can just get 10,000 points ahead of the other team. Game ends, you get your points, you move on. Those people go back to orbit and are given a chance to re-enter the arena in in a different area with different people. Uh, and I think that that's a I think that that's an amazing solution for for people quitting, for people getting just murdered, you know. Well, I hate to break up this uh, idea of yours, but it's actually referring to like at the end of the match. So af after everything is done, that's when it suddenly dissolves the match, not like midway. Interesting. It's not going to. It's not going to keep you. It's not going to take you out of the match. Saying, "Oh, well, you're doing so badly. So here, go back to orbit." It's going to wait until the match is over and say, "Oh, those guys really slaughtered you. Try queuing up in a couple seconds so that you don't get them again." Okay, I see what you're saying. <clears throat> uh, and so, yeah, I guess I just read that wrong. Uh, because it says, in the event of a massacre, all parties are returned to orbit at the conclusion of the match. Okay, so that's so that makes sense. Uh, but then when I read this team-based playlist one, it says, if one team is grossly underperforming, the session is dissolved in favor of matchmaking. That doesn't say anything about the conclusion of the match. That just says, if one team is grossly underperforming. Uh, so, <clears throat> so did you read it the same way I did, Agrios, or did you read it the same way Jez did? Um, I'm, I'm currently reevaluating that right now. Um, I, I originally read that it was going to, I thought it was going to cancel the match partway through. In Venom of Massacre, well, the first one, in Event of a Massacre, all parties return to orbit at the conclusion of the match. That one's definitely the way he's saying. But yeah, absolutely. Then it says team-based playlist. If one team is grossly underperforming, the session is dissolved in favor of matchmaking. I kind of took that as like the I can't remember the name of it, what you call that rule now, but when one team's losing so horribly, you just call the winners the winners and move on. I that's the way I I kind of took that. When you skunk them. What what is it? When you skunk them, like oh, in, is that skunk them, skunk skunking someone. That's the term I was looking for. Yeah, skunk roll. Whereas if you're behind more than you could possibly catch up during the rest of the match, they would just end the match and declare a winner at that point. Right, because it says the session is dissolved in favor of matchmaking. <laughs> I can't even See, imagine. The, <laughs> the reason I think it's different is that the very first thing under Slaughter Rule says return to orbit at the conclusion of the match. They specify when it happens, whereas in the second one it says the session's dissolved in favor of matchmaking. That's why I, I felt more like, well, they're going to end the match early in those cases. I feel the same way, but now that Jez has said that, uh, it it really makes sense either way. W what do you think about this warlock? Do you do you feel it's the way Agrios and I were taking it? Do you feel like it's the way Jez is taking it, or do you or or were you on an island of your own? Oh no, I I would agree with uh, you, Remy. Like I I think it's what what I was pitching when I read it actually was you know if if you're in like let's say you're in a control match and it hits the last five minutes of the match. If the other team's at like eighteen thousand points and you're at six, match is over. Like right, that's, that's what kind I of what I to. thought. Because I mean, granted, you might be able to come back in those last five minutes, but the the chance is pretty slim if you're getting slaughtered that much. Um, okay. So that that was kind of how I I took it was um, the the match would end with so much time left because then it's almost a guarantee, you know probability is you're just not going to do it so we're just going to end the match for you i wonder what the percentage is because i would i would think that that would be the the key to understanding what it is exactly they're talking about because if if less than five percent of all teams who go that crazy of a spread if less than five percent can bring that back you know like we're talking about a change that will affect 90 percent of people who are just being pummeled or don't have the skill, you know, like I I don't know. I think that I think that either way it's it's a good idea because sometimes I don't exit quick enough and then I get beat by the same people who just beat me. <laughs> and that's uh that's always frustrating. <clears throat> uh continuing. Well, I like this I like this change as well because um, 
I'm not a big PvP person, but when I do decide to do PvP bounties, you know, those those win three match bounties, you know, sometimes should be really easy, but I've gotten slaughtered by the same people for five games in a row. Even after I went out of orbit, I got placed back in with these people, and yeah, that was extremely frustrating. <laughs> you know what's funny is, uh, I don't think it was this week, I think it was the week before last, uh, oh, it was during the Iron Banner, uh, I went out with Agrios and Sharks, and they were looking for gear because I got... I don't know, RN Jesus really likes me, and I got full rig gear for for both my, my Titan and my Warlock. Uh, and they were looking for these pieces of armor and we were just we were just getting we were just getting killed over and over. And I'm not a horrible player. Like I'm not I'm not a the best player by a long, long shot, but I am definitely not any kind of noob. I'm definitely not just a a moving target. And and I know that I know that Agrios isn't, and I know that Sharks isn't, but we kept getting just killed. And it occurred to I don't remember which one of us it occurred to, but we were in my party, and my party is is located here in Seattle, where all of these people who've been playing Destiny for years are located. So like we are going up against people who've been playing Destiny forever. Uh, and the second the 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 first match out of changing it to Agrios's server we just started walking all over people <laughs> like there wasn't there it was it was fun crucible was fun in the other direction like it was it was us just putting fools down uh and you can't and so, understate the difference it was night and day right right it was it was as if we had taken off all of our gear and were level 20s and exactly. you know uh but yeah it was insane night and day so if you can <laughs> Try not to be on the Seattle server because because those people have been playing Destiny for a long time. Like I don't even know how many times we probably got hooked up with somebody who's who's had so much more time with Destiny. But I don't know. Moving to a different server was it was totally night and day. Um, <laughs> yay for Florida servers. <laughs> yeah, everybody, it helps that everybody's asleep here at that time that we're finally playing. <laughs> right, we need to find the elderly and the sleeping. <laughs> we'll All kick right. those guys' asses. Moving on, there will be new playlists with the launch of the dark below. They will let you play the co- new content right away. The play- playlists will will require the dark below to enter, and each week they'll have two additional premium playlists. Week one will be Clash and Rumble on the new maps. Rotators will change each week, and new experimental modes will be included. Also, uh, it, it marks, uh, they're giving us fair warning this time, no, no 24 hours notice nonsense. The Iron Banner will be returning on December 16th. Uh, the event standings will be reset like a new season. Level 31 inventory can be earned by winners. And the Dark Below will not be required to compete. Very cool. So, are, are you- yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for the Iron Banner return. I, I had a lot of fun the last time around. I, I thought they, they suitably turn, tuned up the differences in level to, to acceptable ranges. Uh, are, are you guys excited to see it return? <laughs> you know, I might I sure. might actually be able to play it this time around. The last two times I, I was extremely busy, and I was preferring to get my daily and going to bed done kind of thing, and... I wasn't able to really participate, so hopefully this next time around I'll actually be able to get to see what the Iron Banner is like. You know, I think for me, I will probably be spending the majority of my time um, working with the new playlists, or with with like the new strikes and the the new raid. I don't know how much time I'm really going to want to put into the Iron Banner, unless there's something that really stands out. Like something that 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 changes the way it currently is, uh, because You're still up thirty-one. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't know if that's enough for me. I don't know if that's enough for me because that's a lot of grind. Like, what level did you finally get to, Agrios? I got to level five on my warlock and level four on my titan. Those are and, the and, I tried to get anywhere. <clears throat> do you have like a, a a rough idea of how long it took you? Like how long the grind was to get to five? Um. No, 
But I really couldn't tell you exactly how long. It was a lot more reasonable than I expected. It, it was a lot quicker to level than it was with the previous beta Iron Banner and the, 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 beta, the Iron Banner the first time around that only had three levels of rank. The, the new tefer, tempered buff is huge. I mean, by the final two days, you're earning completely double. I mean, it rolled around to Saturday. At that point, I was like, man, I wish I had my Hunter up to, to full level spec to run this because I think in the next two days I could get him to level four and get his gear too. So I, I don't really feel it was un that unreasonable, especially if you maybe only have one character that you want to get through it and you wait till later in the week when the tempered buff is so much. It, it'll literally, literally more than cut the time you have to play in half. You know, that, that, could, uh, that could draw me in. That might uh, that might be something that I'm interested in, but definitely not more than enjoying a new the new raid or a strike, or who even knows what else they're going to add into this. I'm I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to reforge again. I, I had a lot of fun reforging last time. I think it's a great concept, and I just hope that they introduce it for all legendaries eventually because. I would just pump all my modes of light into that slot machine all day long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? That does make me want to get a piece of gear from the Iron Banner. Uh, the the idea of reforging it that is a very cool uh, a very cool thing. Um, all right, so we are coming to the end of our show. Uh, why don't you? Is there something that you uh, that we have to touch on before we leave Agrios? Was there anything else that is like we have to talk about it right this second? Or well, we don't absolutely have to. There is one small section here I didn't get through, uh, it, it mainly pertaining to the new raid. Let's do it. All right. Uh, First small note, the Heroics and Nightfall changes. Uh, with the light, uh, light level increased to 32, Heroics and Nightfalls will be increased by two light levels to keep up with the new content. Uh, light level, uh, level increases in gear items. And uh, for the new Crota's End Raid, it will unlock on December 9th. It will be available at zero hour, as they said. Players uh, at light level 30 can lead a fire team immediately upon the release. So you'll have to have at least one level 30 to lead it. Although, I'm sure they're going to really step up the difficulty and try to prevent people from beating it as quickly as last time. So I'd probably recommend, you know, as many level 30s as possible. The hard ro mode raid as it is now is pretty difficult if you don't have 30s. So I can only imagine that this one's going to be all that much more difficult. On that note, uh, I would like to invite anybody, uh, preferably a team of three, uh, people like I, I want to go through this uh, at zero hour, and right now I have two other people who are level thirty who are who are dedicated to doing this. So if you are out there level thirty and you are interested at December 9th at one a.m. Pacific and you want in on this, uh, let's let's get together and let's start making this making this happen I, I would really like to see another fire team of three like uh agrios and sharks and i have have really uh become t like a machine like i know where they're gonna go at certain areas and it's I, I know that i can trust them to handle their own and having another team of three 30s would be it, it would just be really easy for us to integrate especially if we did something where we each shared a side and that we would each have eyes on and we know what the other people are talking about. So just throwing that out there if you're interested in uh, joining the Guardian one attempt at uh, Crota when it when it drops. Continue, Agrios. Continuing. The reward system in Crota's End will address some issues reported in the Vault of Glass. Raid loot in Crota's End will drop at a higher rate. New raid gear will contain a wider variety of potential perks. Weapons and gear from Crota's End will not require Ascendant Materials for upgrades. Radiant Shards and Radiant Energy required in the raid will be used to upgrade new raid gear. Unwanted weapons and gear from Crota's End will dismantle into Radiant Materials. Primary weapons will only drop in the harder version of Crota's End released sometime in January. So uh, it appears that only the normal mode will be uh, available at launch, with the harder mode coming uh, several weeks later. That makes sense to me. 
that makes sense to me. I, I'm I'm pretty excited about that as well. Like I'm excited about the 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 spread of time over there. So it's not so the the race will be to the normal mode, and then the race will be to the hard mode, and then the hard mode will contain the the real goodies. Because in my mind, the best things that I've gotten out of the raid so far are the three primary weapons that have elements to them. Like that's it's. It's amazing. I got Predith's timepiece when we ran the hard mode the week before last, and that was it. I got Vision of Confluence for Solar, I got Atheon's Epilogue for Void, and now Predith's timepiece for Arc. I am I am set no matter what comes my way, and and it's exciting. Primaries are exciting, uh, so I'm I'm excited to to see what those offer. Like the two different loot tables, what does drop at thirty, what drops at thirty one. Uh, you know, how do you feel about it being available at zero hour on day one with no delay from the DLC drop to when you can enter the raid? You know, I uh, I have a I have a child on the way uh, and will be here sometime in December. So so really, I'm just hoping to dodge that. I'm hoping to dodge that window. Like I I will not put destiny before my family. Um, so I'm hoping that my family <laughs> doesn't show up before then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, so for me, my take on this is kind of skewed because, you know, it could be tonight. It could be in January. I just hope that it's, I hope that it doesn't drop the night I'm having this, this child because I don't know. <laughs> that would be sad. That would be way sad. Uh, what about, what about Crota. what's that? You have to name your child Crota if that happens. Right, right, okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is going to be an interesting conversation when I go talk to Flounder right now. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Mike? What do you think about these uh, about these aspects? Um, you know, I I'm kind of uh, disappointed. I was hoping that it would be um, it'd be you know delayed a week like launch was. Um, Mostly because I feel like the 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 people who go through the story um, are probably going to have a more fulfilling experience when they finish it. But also, I think they'll be better prepared. You know, they'll just they'll have that gear that pushes them past level thirty, most likely. Yeah. And so when they hit the raid, it it won't be as challenging. But you know, for for whoever um, does it that zero hour, you know, good luck and. And uh, have a lot of fun. You know, I the one thing I am excited about, barring uh, bringing another life into this world on that night, uh, I'm excited about being prepared. Like, I feel like I am prepared for 1 a.m. December 9th. Like, I, I feel like when that hits, uh, I have this level 30, you know, the highest you can get right now. And that feels really good when the first raid dropped... I hadn't really gotten the time to understand the mechanics of the, how the legendaries work and how the exotic work. Like I was still, I was still operating on a on a lower level. Uh, but now, you know, now I understand how that all works, and I'm excited about being ready to to be there. Jez, what is your take on all of this? And as an aside, were you ready when that raid was launched? Were you 26 or above at that point? Yeah, I was. 26, but I didn't have the time to put in the the push that was needed to be on those types of world first teams, so that kind of was bad then, but I definitely have the time this time. And, and also, I'm guaranteed to be at 30, because I already have that gear. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, that's it. That is it for our show. It is time to go. We are wrapping up. Uh, let us do shout outs. Uh, Agrios, who are you shouting out to? Crota, I'm coming for you. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> uh, Jez? Uh, I don't know. Lord Saladin, because he's got the coolest armor. He, he does have cool armor. Uh, yeah, I might be really interested in in Iron Banner if I was going to get his armor because it is sweet. Um, 
uh, Warlock shout out. Vanilla Ice. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, no, uh, my shout out tonight is actually to the whole Bungie crew. I mean, thanks guys for this amazing game, and I am excited for this new DLC because I feel like it's gonna feel like a brand new game. You know, there's so many changes coming, and they sound super positive, and that's what I'm excited about. I like so, it. So thanks, Bungie. Thank you very much. I like it. You know what? If they do this to the game every three months, like if 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 what they're looking at is something in this in this arena, I don't know how they would. But you know, after a year, after two years, Destiny is going to be amazing. A Destiny is going to be immense. There's going to be so much to do. You know, uh, so good shout out. Uh, let's see, River. If he was here, I would say that he'd probably shout out to Bell Bunny. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Right? Right? Most definitely. <laughs> or everyone in the Twitch chat in general. I like it. I like it. I uh, would like to shout out to Planet Destiny. Those guys, <clears throat> those people making that content uh, and keeping that website. And it's just, they have a really great thing going on over there. Uh, and I hope that they continue to pump out this amount of content and this quality of content because it's it's really nice having a, just another set of another set of eyes on this. You know, Dato does a great job, uh, Bife does a great job. Like, there's a lot of people in this community who who break down uh, materials and information really well, uh, and I've just I've just been super pleased by Planet Destiny. So that is my shout out. You guys kick ass. Uh, so that's it. I would like to thank everyone uh, listening for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to feedback at guardian1.net, and we will see you next week. Bye.